Bodhitam Yena Tas, my Sri Guru Veda Maha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna, Prestai Bhutale, Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Tiname, Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine. Here Vishesha Sunyavadi Pastyat Yade Satarine. Panchakalpa to Rupisja. Ipa Sindhu, Vebacha, Patitanam, Pavane, Vyo, Vaishnava, Vyo, Namaha, Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Today we'll speak a little bit about. Uh, the topic that I was going to speak tomorrow, I wanted to push it up to today, which is some uh, ideas, techniques on how to improve Japa. What is Japa? What is the holy name? How to approach it? How not to approach it? So I decided to uh, speak about some of these factors. But before I do that, I want to uh, uh, speak a little bit on some health tips. I don't know how many devotees are actually following um, a health regime regimen during this uh, uh, spreading of the uh, coronavirus but uh, from time to time I come across these additional help tips what I find very helpful and um, this was given to me by one devotee um, his name is Asutos and he heard from one devotee in India who is a doctor um, this doctor, since the beginning of the, let me say, the epidemic, pandemic, along with his staff have been assisting uh, and treating uh, COVID patients continuously, practically every day since the beginning of this, which is, goes back to March, actually, in the middle of March. And uh, the doctor and his staff have never felt any infections or any discomfort because they do one thing before they start and one thing before they end. So I thought this is nice. Maybe if devotees are having any symptoms of flu or even colds or maybe even some of the symptoms that COVID, I'm, I just got another letter today from one of my disciples who got COVID. Fortunately, she was able to cure it. Um, but here is a little remedy, which is more like preventative. And it's also curative. And that is, it takes a little bit of time, maybe, maybe 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes again in the evening. But what you do is you get a pot of water and you boil the water. So right when the water is at its brisk boiling, you shut it off. You take a towel and you put it over your head and you breathe the vapors, the steam coming up from the boiling water. You breathe through the nose and out the mouth 10 times. Then you breathe through the mouth in and out the nose 10 times. And you repeat this two more times. So three times cycles, 10 times breathing in, breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. Um, I think many of us are aware of this uh, treatment. It's also good in general for relieving colds and any kinds of congestion. 
But based on this doctor's report, he swears simply by performing this activity every day. He and his whole staff who have been treating COVID patients for months since March, since, since the middle of March, have never been in slightly infected, which is quite unusual because with that kind of continuous contact, there's always something. <laughs> But uh, it's amazing, so. Excuse me. And so maybe uh, this might be something the devotees might want to add to their health regimen. Uh, of course, the other things that I recommend is regular ginger at meals, um, a lot of vitamin C, if you can take it in its natural form. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, also zinc, zinc tablets are good. Take one a day. Um, and of course, general activities are sufficient amount of fresh air, exercise, and uh, making sure that your diet is uh, suitable for good health, uh, avoiding ex any excess amount of sugar, minimize your sugar if you can. Milk products can be taken, but they should be kept to a minimum. Um, and so there are also many suggestions uh, that are floating around the medical fields about what you can do. But these, generally, keep yourself healthy. You keep yourself healthy, and generally, you won't get it. And if somehow or other, by some misfortune, you do get it, you can easily uh, eliminate it. Uh, take a lot of hot things. The virus itself has a layer of fat around it, which protects it. Uh, the hot hot liquids break through that layer and can also kill the virus or nullify the virus's effect. If you drink a lot of cold things, it reinforces that uh, protective uh, lining around the uh, virus and it becomes worse or stronger. So I recommend devotees take, you know, hot teas, uh, especially drink hot water, something I've been following regularly. <laughs> okay, these are just a few basic tips that I think it's always important that we revive this discussion, just to remind ourselves to, uh, you know, that it's not completely gone yet. In some of the areas, it's hardly uh, visible. Like where I am in Slovenia, there's not really much going on in that, but there are cases. Some places like India and the United States, it is like rampant everywhere. So wherever you are, just be careful and take the proper precautions. There's no need to be fearful. Um, if we listen to all the news reports that are going on and they're continually I don't know, I have I stopped listening to them weeks ago, months ago. But I think from what I hear, they're still going on, always talking about what's happening. And they create the fear aspect in everybody's mind. So uh, fear also causes one's health to become jeopardized because fear is, an, is a debilitating feature of the organism. So when we are in a fearful condition, we are, we are uh, what we say, susceptible to physical and mental breakdowns like that. So stay away from fear. Stay away from the news if you can. <laughs> okay, so I'll speak a little bit about how to improve your japa. Um, first of all, we I would like to uh, begin by saying that the essence of the practice of chanting is about reconnecting ourselves with Krishna. 
it's not simply an exercise where we perform some spiritual activities or uh, complete a particular numerical vow or to uh, somehow or other uh, fill our time up with activity. Chanting is about connecting with Krishna. We are connected with Krishna. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. Sarukavunai Sravanari Siddhi Chitte Kori E Udoi. We have an eternal loving relationship with Krishna that can never be lost. It remains there eternally, it's part of our nature. Just like in, we might say, in, the, in our human existence, one of the things that is our nature is to breathe. We breathe, we don't even know, we don't even do it consciously, but we're breathing. It's so much an, uh, an intrinsic, intrinsic part of our existence, breathing, that it's, almost, it's done unconsciously. So, um, in the same way, using that as an example, our, it's even more so in, on the spiritual platform is that our nature is to love and serve Krishna. That is the prime feature of our nature. And the main feature of our nature is to serve, and the prime feature of that nature is to serve Krishna. It's intrinsic. It can never be lost. So japa is a way to reconnect with Krishna in the mood of serving Krishna in devotion. So when we're chanting japa, or we're actually beginning to chant japa, it's nice to reconnect ourselves with that mood of service to Krishna. My dear Lord, I've fallen ayinanda tanujakinkaram patitam bhangvishame bhavamuro kripaya tavapara pankaja stita duli sadvisham vichintaya My dear Lord, uh, O son of Nanda Maharaj Krishna, I am your eternal servant, yet somehow I've fallen into this ocean of birth and death. So we've fallen into this material world. So we just don't come here, we fall into it. We're thrown into it because of wrong desire. Desire is a force that propels in us himself have to be in an environment where these desires can be fulfilled. So the desire to be separate from Krishna cannot exist in the spiritual world. So this is the place. So to fulfill that desire, we fall from grace and we fall into this material. Been completely aware of our situation understanding our suffering in this situation, wanting to get back to Krishna, then we have to, again, connect with Krishna in loving devotional service. So this chanting is about creating a, um, the preliminary preach performance of chanting is about creating a mindset where my dear Lord, uh, I'm trying to get back to you in loving devotional service. Please pick me up. Please engage me in your devotional service. Please reveal to me what is my loving relationship with you. That is also, we can pray like that. Because we each have an eternal loving relationship with Krishna. So japa is not only an act of hearing and chanting. It must be accompanied with a mood of submission to Krishna and a desire to please Krishna and a desire to to actually connect with Krishna. So when we actually uh, practice the process of chanting, we should apply this mood. These moods can be accessed through proper prayers, by uh, citing notable prayers, especially those prayers by the great souls. Srila Rupa Goswami's Namastakam is just eight beautiful prayers in glorification of Krishna 
and glorification of Krishna's holy name, the Shikshastakam prayers, and their individual prayers that we can find throughout the Bhagavatam that help us to reconnect our, our mind and heart in the mood of devotion to Krishna. A beautiful prayer is from the sixth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, I believe it's the uh, 15th chapter, 6, 15, 24. Uh, in that particular verse, it's spoken by Richard Sura. It's a beautiful, beautiful verse. In fact, I have the verse here. Just give me one minute and I'll read it. Uh-huh. It's six canto. 11th chapter, verse number 24. This is spoken by Richard Sura. O my Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, when will I again be able to serve your, lo your eternal servants who find shelter only at your lotus feet? O Lord of my life, may I again become their servant so that my, my, my mind may always think of your transcendental attributes. My words always glorify those attributes and my body always engage in your loving service. So that's Srimad Bhagavatam 6, 11, 24. This one is one that I find, I love to chant every day. This is one by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. O Vaishnav Thakur, alone I have no strength to chant the holy names of Lord Hari. Therefore, I beg you, please be merciful. And with a particle of faith, give me the treasure of the holy name of Lord Krishna. So that's a beautiful prayer. Uh, it kind of indicates our situation. What is our qualification, what is our ability to chant the holy names? Well, we have to pray in order to receive that quality and that ability. So great souls. Now, when he refers to Vaishnav Thakur, he's referring to Srila Haridas Thakur directly. So he's asking Srila Haridas Thakur, please give me the strength to chant the holy names of the Lord Krishna's name is like a great treasure, and you have that treasure. Please impart that, a particle of that treasure to me. Um, these are some beautiful prayers that we can chant during Japa or even at the beginning of Japa. And then there's one here. Um, by Goswami. This is from the Namastika, which we mentioned. O name that destroys the many sufferings of those who take shelter of you. O name that is the form of delightful and intense spiritual bliss. O name that is a festival of happiness for Goku. O perfect and complete holy name of Lord Krishna, I bow down and offer my respects to you. I bow down and offer my respects to you. He repeats it twice. So these are some beautiful prayers. What I'll do is I'll post these prayers on the conference. And um, what actually what I'll do is I'll send the prayers to Mother Lavanya. She is our host for today. And anybody who wants these prayers, um, you just write her. And she can, uh, she'll put her email address on the chat and then you'll have it. If you want these prayers, um, she'll send it to you by way of email. Okay. I have another. Now we also, we use the negative also 
in helping us to chant. There's the email address from Mother Lavanya. Okay. So I'll send her these prayers and then you can write her and get everything. This, this is, these are more like uh, chastising of the mind. Oh fool, oh rascal mind, this body is under certain ta attacks from innumerable diseases and death is certain. What remedial measurements have you taken? Just drink the medicine of Krishna's name, which is the cure for all diseases. Oh my, why are you giving up the nectar of Krishna's names to talk of such things as family problems, security, and all? What can I say to you? Just chant the holy name. These are nice. Hari, oh my merciful Lord, all glories to you, the Lord of Radha. Many times I've avoided you, but this time please take me as your own. So you might think, well, I'll just chant, but you can just chant, and that's nice. But you may not get the benefits of chanting, or you may find it difficult to connect. But these prayers awaken within us the desire to connect with Krishna and help us to bring about that mood to chant in such a way that we can chant with feeling. We can chant with uh, more and more attention. Some of the things we should avoid in our chanting, and this is the most uh, dangerous part of our chanting, of course, there are many things, is, and that is uh, in the back, either, either in the forefront of the mind or in the back of the mind, there is this feeling like I have to finish or I'm, my mind is, wants to finish as fast as I can for whatever reason. Maybe I'm thinking I don't have enough time. I want to other do, I want to do other things, whatever reason. Uh, we call this beat the clock japa. It's not really very uh, pleasing to Krishna. In fact, sometimes we say that when we're in this mood of trying to finish in the, when we're chanting and Krishna is not present. Because we might say Krishna will be thinking, oh, they're, they're just trying to get rid of me so I won't come in the first place. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is not something that is actually very pleasing. So trying to avoid this mood. Therefore, one of the ways to avoid that is that set yourself a time period and within that time period, just chant. So when that time period is up, you can stop. And then whatever rounds you have completed within that time period, You've done them nicely because you know I'm chanting within this time period and that's it. I'm not trying to finish or not finish. I'm trying to connect with Krishna. And when the time is up, then you go on to whatever else you want to do. Or if you have um, a lot of time and time is available, then just try to hear and chant nicely. So uh, avoid this idea of getting finished. It, I noticed in my own japa years ago, I used to be very much prone to that mood of trying to finish because we always had so much services to do and there was a lot of things coming up at the same time. So somehow or other, I've, not, I've pushed that out of my mind and I don't, it doesn't, become a conscious affair anymore. But I notice sometimes it, it sneaks in in a more of an unconscious way. It's there in the back of the mind. The mind is still thinking, hmm, let me complete my rounds. So avoid that mentality by setting yourself a time limit and chant within that time nicely. 
And then when you're when you when the time limit is up, you can go on to something else, or if you feel like it, you can continue chanting. Um, some of the things that we can also access is to uh, uh, Shiva Ram Swami Maharaj mentions this mm, that he says we can either walk and chant or sit and chant. He recommends highly that we sit. He says it's more difficult to concentrate when you're walking because we have to navigate as we walk and that takes away our attention on the chanting. If it's all possible, sit and uh, intermittently, I find this very helpful. Close your eyes and really chant and hear nicely. Every once in a while, open your eyes and have some kind of spiritual uh, deity in front of you, like pictures or your own deities or the holy name written. And in that way, um, if you keep your eyes closed all the time, you may also find that the mind will rush in with a lot of thoughts. So open your eyes once in a while, or sometimes you get a little sleepy if you close your eyes for too long of a period of time. So I find that uh, quite helpful, sitting and uh, carefully chanting. Make sure you hear that sound vibration nicely, and also put as much feeling into the chanting along with the process of hearing. Um, Sachi Nandana Maharaj has written this book. Uh, let's see, The Living Name. Um, it's a great book. It has a lot of interesting points. And he gives various types of uh, examples for various types of people. He expands his, his examples over a large uh, area to for people to choose how best that they can facilitate the quality of their japa now we have to always remember and this is the most important thing is that techniques that we use in japa are secondary the techniques are not the success it's the loving mood or the desire to connect with krishna in devotion that is the is the principle of chanting the techniques help for concentration the help the techniques also help to uh, 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 keep the mind uh, from going someplace else <laughs> they can help in that way like that but it's more than just techniques mm -hmm. much more Um, I received one letter from one devotee just today. I was reading it. And because of this month of Purushottam, Mas, which started on the 18th, um, uh, she's increased the rounds up to 24. And then she also mentioned that she went to 32. And then one day she did 64. So she uh, was amazed from the experiences. So we can do that. I would it's highly recommend it that we take some extra time this this in these days of during this month of Purushottam. It's very auspicious to increase our japa. Um, so if you're doing 16, try to come up to 24 or even more, 32 if you can. And uh, so uh, that is one of the ways to work on the quality. Have patience when you're chanting. Know that there's nothing else that is important at that time. Shut out everything else. The phone is off. All the programs that you want to, you have planned for the day's activities, put them 
uh, on the side out of the mind. If they come back in, just push them out again. Keep yourself focused on chanting. As you continue to chant and go deeper into your chanting, you'll find that it starts to develop nicer. And then um, you actually develop a sweet taste. And then that sweet taste continues. And then the desire to chant more and more also increases. Okay, so again, the main point that we want to convey to everyone today is that chanting is connecting with Krishna. Um, we, we are connected with Krishna, but that connection is, uh, some, is lost but due to our association with material energy. And so reconnecting means offering our devotion to Krishna I am your eternal I am your eternal servant. I've fallen into this world. This place is miserable. Every time I try to do something, it never works out. Even when I get something I like, it doesn't really give me the satisfaction I expected. That's just the material world is just simply meant for our defeat. And uh, Chanting is the way to get out, the way to elevate our consciousness to the spiritual realm, the way to associate with Krishna. And that's the most important thing. To associate with great persons, even in this world, we make arrangements to meet pe people that we like. And we feel really happy in that association when we get it. So imagine the greatest of all persons, that person, who we have an eternal loving relationship. Wow, if we can associate with that person. Imagine the success of, uh, of our, the, our life simply by having that, just a little bit of that association. So that's the mood of chanting, trying to connect with Krishna and devotion. Okay, so we'll stop there. And uh, we'll open it up to questions. We can go until six o'clock. I'm sorry, five o'clock. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Um, very nice points. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. So Maharaj, um, if, um, so does this chanting process um, affect uh, Sorry, sorry. Um, does um, the reading and hearing, um, does it affect our chanting, uh, Guru Maharaj? Which one affects which one? Yeah, suppose if we are not reading uh, regularly or hearing lectures like regularly, uh, will that affect uh, our chanting, Guru Maharaj? Well, Bhakti Siddhanta makes a comment in that relationship, uh, which... Uh, I'll read the comment. Give me a few minutes and I'll give you the exact uh, reading of the of this. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here he goes. Hari Nam, the chanting of the holy name, and Hari Katha go together. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, let me see, let me, uh, we'll give me one minute here. All right with you. Oh, 
Harinam, the chanting of the holy name, and Hari, let's see, chanting of the Hari Nam, the chanting of the Hari name, and Hari Kata go together. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explains. Okay, well, one minute again here. I'm, I keep losing it. Arina, the chanting of the holy name, and Harikata talks about Krishna go together. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta explained that Harikata is the Sarup Shakti, the personal energy of Harina, and, the, and that just as Krishna is properly worshipped, not alone, but with his Sarup Shakti, Sri Radha, Radharani, recitation of Harina is incomplete unless accompanied by hearing Harikata. Hmm. I'll read it again. Harinam, the chanting of the holy name, and Harikata talks about Krishna go together. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati explains that Harikata is the Sarup Shakti, the personal energy of Harina of Harinam, and that just as Krishna is properly worshipped, not alone, but with his Sarup Shakti, Srimati Radharani, recitation of Harinam is incomplete unless accompanied by hearing Harikata. So I hope that answers your question. We have to hear and chant the glories of the Lord along with hearing and chanting about uh, ch hearing his holy name and chanting his holy name. <clears throat> they go together, just like the energy and the source of energy. So yeah, reading is, you know, Harikata. And Harinam is chanting. So combine these two and you have a complete process of all the worshipful sadhana that is required. And of course, there are many benefits by reading and hearing the philosophy, hearing about Krishna's pastimes. Thank you so much. So the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Important. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think uh, Vivek Prabhu has a question. He raised your hand. Which Vivek is that? We got two. Two? Vivek and Anju. Oh, okay. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, well. Maraj, uh, my question is that like, once we complete our 16 rounds in the morning and then it's recommended that we should keep chanting Krishna whenever we are doing any service and we get any time because after that even we are chanting Mahamantra during any service, it's good. So like I always feel why it's not really like bad like because we are being a bit attent unattentive because our mind is somewhere in that service and we are still in the back of mind chanting that name. So how this is different from actual chanting versus like... Well, your prescribed rounds, you must chant with complete attention and devotion. But the principle of practice of devotional service is to always remember Krishna. So you can remember Krishna throughout the day. 
So remembering Krishna throughout the day means, all right, I'm doing some service. And then I'm also chanting. I'm remembering Krishna by chanting his holy name I am serving. The other day we were speaking about this and I was remembered one particular quote. It's not a quote actually, but it's just a little uh, feature of the Bengali society. It's come, it's a Bengali statement. It says, Hate Koro Kaje Muki Bolohuri. Hate Koro Kaje Muke Bolohuri. So, Hate Koro Kaje means I'm working with my hands. And Muki Bolohuri means I'm chanting the name of Hari Krishna. So, they say that in Bengal, do your work, but chant. It's nice. So aside from your prescribed chanting, uh, Sri Devi put it up in Hindi, Hoton main kam, Hoton something. I'm not good at these languages. I think Mataji Hoton pe nam. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so make that a principle. Chant and work. That way you're always with Krishna. And that way, uh, Maharaj, like, like during the service, like if we are remembering Krishna name, is Mahamantra is still like the best or like we should just think about some other names? No, Mahamantra. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, any way you can remember Krishna is good, but the Maha Mantra is the best. Krishna's name. You can chant Krishna, 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 hey. Krishna, 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 hey. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna Pahimam, Krishna 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 Rakshamam, Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshamam, Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam. Somebody find that it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's Lord Chaitanya when he was traveling through the Jari Kanda forest. He started chanting like that. And he's asking Krishna, please be with me. Please protect me. Rakshamam. Rakshamam, protect me. Pahimam. Pahimam. So that's a beautiful, beautiful verse. It's part of a, uh, it's actually a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita somewhere in Madhya Lila. If somebody can find it and post it, it would be good. But that's nice. You could just chant that all day because it has a kind of a ring to it. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Especially when you're walking Thank you, Thank outside. You. outside. It's nice. And if you do that, you'll definitely please Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. It's really good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. This is Tusha. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, please. Uh, I have a bit of a scientific question on chanting is there any physiological effects when you chant i.e. are there any endorphins released do you feel euphoric confident what does the shastras or uh, oh, yeah. say on that chanting it has a physiological effect it has a psychological effect it has a uh, it has an aesthetic value it has a Everything, everything transforms when you chant. Your body, 
your mind, your everything. Everything goes through a transformation. Thank you, Radha Bhakti. Uh, this is a very useful uh, preaching point, uh, Guru Maharaj, because often I get questions like, you know, what are, what are the effects of chanting? Mm, the effects of chanting is you, you get, you, you can connect with Krishna in devotion. That's the effect. I mean, there are material subsidiary effects, but we don't focus on them. They, they may happen or may not happen. We don't worry about them, and they're not—they're not something that is we're concerned with. We're concerned with devotion to Krishna. That's all. You know, I mean, there are people who do experiments with people who are sick, and then they give them the chant, and the chanting uh, helps them to get over their sickness. And that's also true. But that's using the chanting for some material gain, and it's also considered to be one of the offenses to the holy name. But the, the holy name will act like that also. It will make everything auspicious. That's why when we say on the first verse, uh, uh, the first verse in uh, the Shikshastikam prayers is, it ends with Sarvatma Snaparam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. Sarvatma Snaparam. Sar, snapa, snapa means bath, a bath, a cleansing. And Sarva means all. So the holy name cleanses everything. Your home, your possessions, your body, your mind, your existence people around you <laughs> it's all encompassing but we don't focus on these subsidiary benefits we focus on the main thing which is to connect with krishna and devotion i often tell the story how when we were in america preaching many years ago it's a long story, so I, maybe many of you heard it. There was a major drought in the United States, and I was on a TV show, a radio show, I'm sorry. And uh, we, we, we were inspiring people to chant, to, to help get over the drought, and it worked. Within a few hours, the, the drought that had been on for four months, no rain for four months. We got, we don't know how many people, thousands and thousands of people to chant over the radio. And then within a few hours, it rained for three, three days straight. That was a wonderful story. I'd actually have it on video too, that whole story. But that was done in order to get people to chant. The fact that that they chanted to get over the drought. We chanted to we chanted to get them to chant. That's all. Because <laughs> anyone who chants for any reason gets some benefit. Yeah. Prabhupada also talks when he was a young boy, when he was about a year and a half years old. He was living in Calcutta. There was a major plague that was traversing the whole city, and people were dying left and right. And uh, they were trying everything to, to destroy the plague. Nothing worked. So somebody organized Harinam Sankirtan and went from house to house. They, were, they had a band of kirtaneers and they were just traveling everywhere, going from house to house, chanting. And after some time, the plague subsided. Rabbi talks about that. If you want this pandemic to stop also, Mass Harinam around the world, and it'll be gone in no time. <laughs> That's a fact. But people won't do it. We're trying to do it within our own confines here. Just like I'm in Slovenia, and the devotees here are very enthusiastic for Harinam. They go out regularly for Harinam, sometimes every day, 
and sometimes, uh, but, but on the weekends, they go out regularly for two to three hours and chant in the park like that. And people are there. So, yeah. If the whole world chanted, there would be no pandemic. <laughs> There'd be no, no problems anywhere. <laughs> That's the idea. That's this Krishna consciousness movement is to somehow spread the glories of the holy name far and wide. That's our mission. Everything becomes auspicious. Yeah, very nice example. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. The, ch the chanting to create the rain, obviously that's super powerful because it's pouring down with rain in London still, Guru Maharaj. Well, you can chant and say, thank you. May the rain of the holy name fall upon me. And, like a and that you can say, you can, we want the holy name to rain on us. <laughs> drown us in a deluge where we are submerged in this water of nectar. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Hare Hare. Chant. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Gurudev. Thank you for this very important subject of really focusing and chanting. I definitely have a lot of challenges when I'm chanting. In the back of my mind is this feeling that I must be productive, I must be industrious, I must get going, I have to do something. I have to... There is this uh, very deep conditioning which tells me that don't just sit around and you know chant, do something, you know, get up and work hard and be productive and be industrious and show something. And so somehow, even as I'm chanting, I'm I'm deep down, I'm feeling, no, I've got to do something, I've got to do some service, I've got to move my body, not just sit in one place and chant. It doesn't seem to me that the highest service is chanting that still somehow doesn't get into my head. So how do you overcome this mentality? You can't separate sadhana from service, although we make a distinction based on the activity. Sadhana leads to service, service leads to sadhya, sadhya means the goal. But chanting is the foundation that uh, develops, when chanting develops, our service actually becomes nectar. And we get inspiration in our service from chanting. We, so uh, you have to relegate time for chanting and you have to relegate time for service. When you're chanting, you shouldn't be thinking, well, I'd rather be doing service. And when you're doing service, you shouldn't be thinking, and, you know, I'd rather be doing something else. Focus, that's all. Is that too hard? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a bit challenging because uh, mind is, you know, always very gentle, it's very fickle, it's always telling. Uh, well, well, you know, Prabhupada says, if we chant alone by ourselves, that's for devotees who are very advanced. He said, it's very difficult to chant by yourself, unless you're very, very advanced. So the best thing for you to do is find some group you can chant with. I don't know. You know, I'm very blessed uh, by having my god sister Govardhan Leela call me every morning and that's the only way I'm able to chant right now. Well, get a get a chanting thon going where a few ladies get on and you're all chanting together. Your your questions are all your your questions are all practical. How to practically apply the knowledge and the philosophy. 
You use your intelligence, that's all. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, it's not a question, but I, I will. Sorry, Maharaj. Can you hear me, Maharaj? Of course. Yeah. Uh, it's not a question, but I would uh, just uh, like to share something on this uh, chanting, how it affects me. And I think uh, normally I used to do that as well, uh, that uh, chant uh, uh, our human, uh, uh, what's called, defects says that, and we always want something back, you know, looking for, even praying Krishna, we want something from him, always a result. And I think that's, uh, the, that's the reason our mind is uh, bewildered and going everywhere. But then I came across this, uh, I think I uh, was reading and I got the benefits of chanting Hare Krishna. Man. When I went to that, I thought, yeah, that's why if we know the benefit, because we want to know the results, of uh, chanting, why we should be chanting, and why should we ch chanting with a pure mind or concentrate? This benefits uh, does help us then that when we know that yes, like we we shouldn't ask anything from Krishna, but Krishna is always reciprocating us by giving us the benefit which we don't understand. So I came to this a few uh, benefits. If you don't mind, Maharaj, taking your time, I'll just go through it. It might help others as well. It's like uh, one of the benefits, you get the control or, or, or over your mind. Yeah. And in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, it says that one must control the mind. Those who have their mind control becomes their best friend. And in turn, if they don't, then it becomes uh, their greatest enemy. So chanting does help us to control the mind. Yeah. Prabhupada yeah. answers. Prabhupada answers that question. Yeah. He says. Yeah. He says through the hearing process we control the mind. Mm. So you have to focus on hearing. Yeah. Then and then the mind, the mind becomes controlled through the hearing process, not mm -hmm. separate. Mm -hmm. so, so more you chant, uh, you get. Uh, you can control the mind. Mind automatically comes to be controlled. Uh, Chant the and hear, hear, you yeah, got to. Hearing, hearing. Um, Without the hearing process, the mind will not stay anywhere in one place. Other one is you can reach the absolute st state of benefit, you know. Just mm -hmm. to think that uh, chanting is not a uh, material happi happiness. There's no material happiness without. Uh, uh, chanting um, uh, Krishna's names. Uh, mm -hmm. So every time we chant, there's a reason, but the reason is to please Krishna, if you think that. If, uh, it's also, we can also add, the reason we're chanting is to purify the heart, yeah. to awaken our love for Krishna, to, uh, yeah. So, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fifth canto, uh, Prahlad's prayers to Lord Nishringadev. Uh, I think it's verse, it's 5, 18, 9, I believe. And he says, wherever there is a prayer, there is a request for a benediction. Mm. So what, what benediction are we requesting? The, the, we want to focus on those benedictions that will bring our consciousness to Krishna and not simply look for material benedictions from our spiritual activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. and again, it's yeah. like, sorry, Maharaj. Uh, Thank it's you. also arrogance of ourself to ourselves that who we are in uh, uh, what I'm saying uh, so that uh, sound vibration helps us to self-realization mm -hmm. yeah yes. sound is spiritual spiritual yes. sound vibration okay thank you Madhavi thank you Mahavati. thank you <laughs> Uh, Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, I think uh, we have to end the call here. You said I... 
It's uh, yeah. Can you take one more? Well, if we have a, someone wants to end it, end it with one last question, we can take one more. Yeah, I request devotees if they have any questions, can go ahead. Okay, Maharaj, uh, I think there are no more questions. And uh, can I quickly ask you about uh, tomorrow's topic, uh, Guru Maharaj? Holy name. Holy name. Okay. Okay, We're switching. You. We switched today's topics for tomorrow's. So. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Adarya Chandrika, for joining us. Welcome to our somewhat humble group here. Thank you for being with us. We are honored. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Thank you so much that I can be part of your family. It's your always inspiration for me. So I will be here with all of you as much as I could, especially the topic is the most, the best, most beautiful topic. So thank you so much for your time and also to the, thank you to the family to organize all these calls. And yeah, I'm happy that I can be here. Thank you, really. <laughs> Arigol, arigol. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.